For the brothers of Mepkin Abbey, every day is a quest to be more devout, to grow closer to God. Each of those days begins at 3 a.m. with the brothers meeting for prayer, devotion, and meditation numerous times until it's back to bed at around 8 p.m. All of the people would feel that they are called by the Lord in one way or another, but the reasons why each one would choose would have to be uh, between that person and God. It's a way of life that is chosen by a very small number of individuals. Right now we would have about 17 here. And those who come here seldom leave. Brother John, who is one of the leaders at Mepkin Abbey, has been they here for 53 years. Uh, that's part of the uh, tradition that we have in, in the monastic uh, setup, is that we are committed to staying in one place. For years, the monks adhered to their lifestyle with little contact with the outside world. There is still a good bit of uh, solitude here, and that hasn't changed all that much. In recent decades, though, the doors have been opened. The public is invited to visit. People can enjoy the beauty and peace that is found on 3,200 acres of property which lies along the Cooper River. There's a glimpse into the monastic life, too, as tours of Mepkin Abbey are available and some services are even open to the public. At the Welcome Center, there's also a store where items produced by the monks can be purchased. You see, not all of the brothers' time is spent working on their spiritual well-being. Basic Constitution and Rule of St. Benedict tells us that you know, we have to certainly provide for the upkeep of the monastery and not depend uh, totally on uh, gifts and offerings. About five hours of every day is spent on the work intended to earn income for the monastery. By design, that work is through the brothers' hands. The Trappist tradition has had farming for many, many years to provide this and to be close to the earth and to be able to be close to nature and the earth. It is a uh, way of trying to reach a balance of prayer and the spiritual reading and uh, manual labor. Those are the pillars that the monastery is built upon. In 2009, the brothers decided to start growing mushrooms after 40 years of raising chickens and selling the eggs. We uh, thought that this might be a, a very viable thing for us to give it a shot. It was only after getting into the business that they found the variety of mushrooms they had chosen, oyster mushrooms, weren't the easiest to produce. Frankly, we didn't realize how difficult they were until we got into it. Oyster mushrooms uh, depend very much on having the right temperature, and the right uh, humidity and the CO2 level, light level, and so all that has to be uh, incorporated in growing the mushrooms. In the almost three years of growing the mushrooms, though, the brothers have the process down. Here, they are preparing columns in which the mushrooms will grow. This is the substrate, it's a mixture of sort of the spawn for the mushrooms and the substrate with the straw and the cotton, which is what they eat. In addition to controlling the temperature, humidity and all, the environment for every step along the way must be kept as sterile as possible. All bacteria, you know, has to be totally kept away from it or uh, it's a battle of molds. Once the columns are packed, they are prepared for hanging in the climate controlled growing units. So eventually the spawn will come to basically populate this entire column. Holes are punched into the plastic to provide outlets for the mushrooms, which will start appearing in two and a half to three weeks. So we create these holes so it knows where to put out its mushrooms. If things are done properly, each individual column will continue to produce mushrooms for about three months. I don't think any one thing is going to do it for us anymore with the economy. Uh, we're going to have to venture out into other ventures, but the oyster mushroom, it's a, it's a good decision. We're happy with it. The brothers are happy with the decision to grow oyster mushrooms, and they are rewarded for their efforts by a product that others want. They are a very good taste, uh, very pleasant, and they flavor the food nicely. Fresh and dried mushrooms are sold through local grocery stores and at the Abbey store. One of the biggest segments of the market, though, consists of nearby restaurants. 
in Charleston. They have a high tourism rate there, and uh, they're in great demand in the restaurants in Charleston. They were very most difficult to get uh, into the, the Charleston area until we started growing them. Growing them here, they were able to arrive at the chef's place in restaurants in Charleston uh, quite fresh. Oyster mushrooms are the top product for the brothers of Mepkin Abbey right now, but not the only one. One new item for which they have a lot of hope are microgreens. And that's a demand also for the restaurants. The same people that are getting the oyster mushrooms are getting the microgreens. Through the products that are grown and sold by Mepkin Abbey, there is a connection between the monks and the world beyond where they live. It's a good, uh, make people aware of the monastery for one thing. Thanks to the quality of the work done by the brothers, too, the public view of the monastery is generally positive. With the mushrooms under the label of Mepkin Abbey, uh, people can be assured that a lot of care has gone into uh, the production of these mushrooms. That reputation better enables the brothers to provide for themselves and therefore continue their spiritual journey through life.